Namaste. Unique unicorns. Merry mermaids. <laughs> I just love doing this stuff in my car. Okay. Everybody, I'm just trying to shuffle. So, uh, bef I'm before I do what you saw on the thumbnail. Hi, Namaste. Wait, Namaste. Namaste, everyone. Okay. Okay. Um, before I get into what I put on the thumbnail, um. I want to do a collective read, a little quick collective read, okay? So I was meditating in my car. I thought I had to do a whole day, the whole day. It was supposed to be a half day. Then it turned into a whole day, and I was kind of pissed because they're doing testing, and so that meant I, I wouldn't have a break um, at all. And so I need time to use the bathroom. Um, sorry. Um, anyhow, then the assistant principal came in and said, no, it, it's back to a half day because the teacher was finished with the testing. So um, I go back tomorrow, but tomorrow will definitely be a full day, they said. So, so be it. Um, at Michael's, I need to get some art supplies. And I said, uh, no better time to do a little weed for... Maya Malete, because I promised I'd do that. I didn't forget about you, Taurus. Um, and I just have to be in my right mind. I brought my book with me just in case I felt like doing Taurus. And maybe after I get out of Michael's, I'll do Taurus. But I, I gotta do this first. So I just want to ask my angels to give us a couple of cards for the collective. My sassy subs, a card, a couple of cards for my sassy subs for my collective. The Collective Namaste Ninjas, the Unique Unicorns, Merry Mermaids, the Merry Mermen, up to 11%. Um, and the Bella Butterflies. Bella Butterfly, if you see this, Forever Bella Butterfly. If you see this, Jackie, um, please call me because something happened with your phone. I can't find, I must have had to clean my phone out which means I have to erase voice texts. Um, otherwise, it, my I can't film on my phone because it gets too filled up. So I've been trying to get in touch with you because I need to ask you a question about um, Jenny Rivera. So I am going to be doing... I'm almost done watching the series, um, which I like to watch things on it, but I wanted to ask you a question. And so just... When you get a chance, even if you just give me a quick text saying hello, so then it'll come up on my feed. Because I just have so many different phone numbers for you. All right. So what are, what are, what are the angels' messages for my unique unicorns, merry mermaids, namaste ninjas, the zen zebras? Um, messages for my... Sassy subs, my super califragilis subs. Thank you, thank you, spirit. I already said my prayers uh, off the air because I'm doing the ancestor cards that some people love so much. Okay. Let's just do three cards, and I have the book. These cards are from Carmen. Shout out to Carmen. Shout out to um, uh, my Zen Jen. Thank you so much from Canada. Shout out for all my subs in Canada. I know I have a, a few, but shout out to Jen. Thank you so much for your um, generous donation to my channel and um, for buying another piece of my artwork. Thank you. Shout out to Tammy Mullen from Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. Um, thank you so much for your generous uh, buying of my work, um, for your beautiful granddaughter, and um, 
around getting your box. Actually, I started getting your box together last night. Um, shout out to everybody and anybody who supports Mystic Greedy MB, okay? Um, my channel. Even if you just share my videos or watch my videos, give me a thumbs up. Okay. Thank you. I really shuffled. I really shuffled a long time. All right, so let me just do four. Okay. So we got four. Yeah. Okay, one second. One second. Getting organized. I'm wearing a duster because I went to work today and it was freezing in the class. So. Okay. Now my incense went out. Did I burn it over? Oh, yeah. This is what it's been doing lately. It's been... Does anybody else have trouble with the incense that I send you? I find it gets to be small, half of it, and then it just goes out, and it's very hard to light it again. I don't know why. But whenever I, I'm doing a case where I'm trying to find somebody's body, you have to have your white sage going, and I have the Palo Santo stick. So, no worries. And I said my prayer. Prayers. I don't know. Very hard to light it, relight it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, see, that's weird. It's sort of lit. Sort of. I gotta shut off this air. Yeah, I got the air on, the window's up. Yeah. Okay. You see that? Do not look at the back seat. Okay. <laughs> I'm in the process of cleaning it up. Yeah, right. Okay, anyhow. So the first card, this is for my Zen Zebras, uh, all my people, all the people out there that show me so much support and love and friendship. Shout out to Quantum Reality, Ravenheart. Um, shout out to uh, Genocide. Shout out to my Bayo. Shout out to Jojo Ballistic. Um, okay, so Feather. This calling card from the unicorns tells you they are near you. Okay. Can you see that? Okay, so... Um, they're, they're telling you that somebody out there, one of my Zen Zebras out there, have um, some messages from people who have passed over. They're trying to get you messages, okay? But I'm going to do this right, and I'm going to use the book that um, I got from Carmen. And shout out for Tammy Church, um, you know, who had a few weeks ago had a heart attack. And I know she's healing well, but shout out for Tammy Church. The prayers are still up for you, okay? I always think about you. Okay, so um, keep continue your journey of healing. Can you guys see the smoke? It's making like weird things. I don't know if you could see it. Okay, so Feather 8, it's card number 8 as well. When you choose this card, it's a sign from the unicorns or from spirits, um, the angels, that they have a message for you. So look for a sign from them and know that they are assisting you. And the affirmation is, I look for a message from the angels today. I look for a message from the angels today. I look for a message from the angels today, from my angels, my guides, okay? And you will see it, okay? It could be a feather. It could be a song on the radio. It could be bumping into somebody that you haven't seen in a long time, that you missed. It could be, uh, you could be watching television or a YouTube channel, and they say something that reminds you of that person that passed away. They are still with you, is what they're trying to tell you. And they are protecting you, okay? The next card for my Zen Zebras, 
I hope that resonates with some people out there. The next card is moving. Wow. Okay, so it's number 20. And it says, change is happening, so be prepared to move physically or spiritually. Change is happening, so be prepared to move physically or spiritually. Okay, so we can move spiritually without even moving physically. We can move like in our mindset, the way we look at things, the way we look at a problem or a situation, or we could be basically getting ready to move. All right. So 20. Let's see what they say. Moving. This card suggests that change, internal or external, is imminent. Prepare yourself to move forward and know that the unicorns will help you make something wonderful happen. Affirmation. My angel is helping me to move forward. My angels are helping me to move forward. My angel is helping me to move forward. Okay. So in other words, I just want to look at that again. Prepare yourself to move forward and know that the angels will help you to make something wonderful happen. So a lot of people don't like change, including this one over here. Um, a lot of people feel like, no, you know what, I'm scared to make that change from the job or the um, side, get a side business or um, relationship because you're just scared of the, you know, what you don't have. Um, so what you have might be terrible or not, not fulfilling you, but at least you know what it is, okay? So some people are very scared to make that transition or to make any kind of change. So what they're saying to you is with the feather card and with this card, the angels are there for you. Your guides are there for you. Your angel, your ancestors in heaven are there for you. They're still watching over you. The veil is very thin. They're still there for you to help you make those moves that you need to make that you know will make you happier. Okay? If it's scary, it doesn't mean you're supposed to stay still. If it's scary, it just means that you need to reach out to the universe and to your angels and your guides and to God and also your friends on the earthly plane to help you and assist you. Hope that resonates. So, so far, we, number wise, we got a 20 and an 8. Now we got 9. Oh, somebody is moving. Somebody is moving somewhere. Flight. Flight. Let your creative imagination fly. Okay. But I, for some reason, I take this as going somewhere as well. Okay, uh, I'm going to look it up because I have not used these cards in a long time. So we got an 8, a 9, and a 20 so far. Now I'm looking up 9. Use your imagination to build castles in the air. Then ask the unicorns or the angels to help you ground your visions. With their help, you can achieve much more than you believe possible. And the affirmation is, I use my imagination to expand my visions. I use my imagination to expand my visions. I use my imagination to expand my visions. Okay? And I use my angels and guides to help me expand my visions, make my visions and my dreams come true. Okay? They want you to dream. They want you to have aspirations. They want you to have... Um, beautiful visions and dreams of trips and dreams of moves and dreams of even if you stay in the same place or the same house or the same apartment making different kinds of moves okay internally or externally what I love about these cards that Carmen gave me from New Zealand um, is that they're all different. I, like every time I use them, which I guess I haven't used them that that much, um, but every time I pick them up, 
there are so many of them that I've never seen before. Okay. So then we have, the fourth one is Divine Sight, number seven. Okay, so we have seven, eight, nine, and 20. All right. If that means anything to anybody. Well, I was born on the seventh over here, so... Um, and seven and eight are my favorite numbers. First seven, then eight. Okay. Divine sight. See the divine in everyone. Now look at this. It's kind of like sit, sitting, seems like they're sitting in a jail, but um, these two people are a little bit better off than this guy over here that's sitting on the floor. And then there's this unicorn that is looking at the guy that's on the floor because the unicorn can see or the angel could see the goodness in that one that's on the floor and other people aren't seeing it because they're like oh that person's poor or that person's derelict or you know has a drug addiction or whatever um and meanwhile the angel comes down or the unicorn comes down and says but i see the goodness in that person so they want, divine wants us to see the divine in each other, the goodness in each other, the gifts and talents that we all have. Okay. I hope you guys like that. Sorry it was short, but I have something else to do with you. Okay. So... Um, those of you who have been, namaste, those of you who have been, um, watching and keeping up with the Maya Malete case, I have told you that I want to, um, do more on it, do more for Maya and her three children that she had told me in my head to please protect her children and they are still with the father um, that might have allegedly, and everything I say, all my readings, are for entertainment reasons only. And, no, they are. Uh, for entertainment reasons only, um, but they could be helpful. Um, like I said, I used to work for the NYPD on the side for free. Um, the helpline, looking for people, missing people, um, letting them know what fires, you know, when there was a fire, a uh, whole building burnt to the ground um, in Staten Island, New York. And I worked with the police and I told them exactly who I saw that did it. Um, and the detectives came to my house because they said nobody knew that. They didn't understand how I knew that information. But it was a vision that came into my head. And, um, Guess what? I was right. A lot of people died in that fire, including children. So, uh, anyhow, let's get back to Maya. Um, recently, it has come to my uh, attention and attention of a lot of people that um, the four-year-old boy, there's, there's a nine-year-old daughter, 11-year-old daughter, and a four-year-old son. The four-year-old son, there was a picture of him standing on the kitchen table, I believe it was the kitchen table or dining room table, and he was surrounded by guns, right? Do you think that is safe? No, I think not. Plus, they have a, um, a, what's it called? A recording of eight, I think six to eight shots being shot the night that Maya went missing. The kids in the backyard screaming. They weren't laughing, they weren't playing. I listened to that tape over and over again because I'm very clairaudient. Um, and when I see picture and I see videotape, which the, um, Maya used to have a YouTube channel, so I watched that. I, there was only a couple of videos that they have up. And one of them was her playing guitar to her son and he was a baby, he was like two, and he was singing all the words with her. Um, very smart, little boy, okay. I cried over that video. That video made me cry like a baby. I didn't want to, because I'm, I'm tired of crying, to tell you the truth. 
Really. <laughs> but anyhow, let me just crack a window. Can't do too much because the, a lot of birds in this area. I don't want them to come in. So anyhow, um, the boy was. There was a picture of him surrounded by guns, even AK-15. I'm probably saying them wrong because I don't have any gun knowledge, but um, so many, you know, I think bullets were on the table, whatnot. I don't understand why this mother effer is not clink, clink, locked up. These kids, 11-year-old girl, 9-year-old girl, and a 4-year-old boy should not be with him, okay? Why not? Because he was the last one to see Maya, okay? Because there were gunshots heard because he left the 11 year old daughter and the nine year old daughter alone in the house for 12 hours while he took the boy and maybe something else uh, to an undisclosed area, I think. Um, and he left his cell phone home so they couldn't track him. Um, they think he was at Uh, some sort of beach or trail anyhow that's for the police to decide but I'm telling you she keeps on telling me in my head please I thought you I thought you said you're gonna Katrina you were gonna protect my children I thought you said you were gonna do that and I said I am trying Maya and so that's why I have to do the video today okay hopefully somebody in law enforcement will see it hopefully you guys will share it and it'll go somewhere to at least clink clink on Larry you know Barry and Larry all right please God protect those children I already put a, a guardian angel um, protection around them but uh, you know there's only so much you could do it always uh, what did I say in my cold read about Maya is that she said she said to me it could be like the Susan Powell story and Susan Powell was the woman that we never found. The husband definitely killed her. The, his brother knew something about it, and he killed himself, uh, probably hid her body. And then he wasn't supposed to be with the kids alone, and he got with the kids alone and blew up the house and blew up himself and the kids. Do we want that to happen again? Come on. All right. Yeah, and everybody's, you know innocent until proven guilty in a court of law in the United States of America I understand that but we can't have blinders on and and let kids not be safe uh, why hasn't um, CPS been called if there was gunshots and the kids were playing in the yard for for um, 10 30 at night on a school night I guess or whatever it was Thursday night I think it was Thursday night um, yeah, so that's a school night. Four, nine, and 11 shouldn't be playing outside at 10.30 at night. That has to be investigated. Why weren't the kids interviewed? I know that we don't know what the kids said because they're protected by the laws because they're minors. I understand all that. Um, and we'll never hear what they said. But um, let's protect them, okay? Let's give them to her family, Maya's family. Let's get them out of that house and away from the guns and away from uh, danger, All right? Or something bad will happen. Or something worse will happen. Please, God. One second. Okay, so... I meditated on my ancestor cards. I said the prayer already before I got on the air. Hey, that rhymes. And I, I basically said, Maya, could you or your guides tell us in my head or in the cards or both um, where you could be found, your physical body could be found, whether you're with us or past. Okay, and so I heard 10 and I usually never hear 10. And then after I got pulled out the 10, I heard another five. So I pulled out, I have 15 cards. I usually never do that many cards. Where are the cards anyway? I don't know, 
there somewhere in the car. Who knows? That's somewhere in the car. Okay, anyhow. Yeah, I see them. Okay, so this is what I got. Hopefully it'll resonate with somebody, something. Um, please, please God. That's our prayer. Okay, so I got Hills and Sand Dune. Okay, absorb that. Hills and the sand dune. I am not great with location. Like, I would have to get a specific... It, it, I do hear, like, a weird name. It kind of sounds Native American. Kailuna. But I don't, I don't know if I feel hard or really hot about that. But when I ask for names, I did hear that weird name. Look over by Kailuna. But I do see trail. I do see the mountains in the background. And I see like a, a, a car trail, a bike trail, car and a bike trail. But I'm not really seeing many signs. So that's what I was basically asking her. So she's saying hills and sand dunes. And when I did my cold read, I did feel like beachy. I did feel like, um, and I never get anybody in the water. I got her in some sort of water. Okay. I don't feel like it's far from the house, but it's not just like walking distance. It's definitely had to be driven to. And I don't feel she was alive. Yeah. She just said, not willingly, Katrina. Not willingly, because I wasn't... wasn't awake. I wasn't... Certainly wasn't a family trip. That's what she said. Okay. Then I got six to 12 months. How long has she gone since January 7th? So, February 7th, March 7th. April 7th, May 7th. That's four months. So maybe they're saying in two more months where it's six. I know these things take time and nobody nobody has the time for it. Or are, is she saying, or the spirit guide saying, it was six to 12 months that they were having a very bad time. Like, yeah, okay. Thank you for that. Thank you, Maya. She goes, I, I knew for, a, a, she goes, Katrina, I knew about a year, for about a year, that it, it was not going to work out. Not two years, about one year, 12 months. I know you did. She was like, Katrina, I took steps. I went to the lawyer and I was, that's what we fought about. He was mad about the lawyer thing. See, this happened with my, with my husband, my first husband. Um, I went to a lawyer um, that was a friend of my brother's and he was kind of like a family friend. Um, but I just met him for the first time then, and he was very good friends with my brother. And um, I went for a consultation with him. Um, and he just, it was free. He just told me, you know, different things. And when I went home, I told my ex-husband um, that I went, and he jumped up on the couches and was jumping from one couch to the other. And I thought he was definitely gonna hit me. He came real close to my face, was pointing in my face, screaming on the top of his lungs. And then like for hours, he just sat there convincing me. Then he said he would not sign any divorce papers. He would not let me get divorced. And for some reason in my head, I thought maybe I wouldn't be allowed to get divorced if he didn't sign the papers. So, he convinced me after like many, many hours of sitting there and me being afraid of him um, that to not go to that lawyer, my brother's friend, and to go to his lawyer so that we could do it cheaply. And that was a big mistake, okay? 
but she shown me that she shown me that happened over 10 years ago so she's shown me that whole scene because she's trying to reiter reiterate to me that once he found out she went to a lawyer he flipped he flipped his gourd just like my ex but look what comes up Should this say gunshots, plural? Then I have one to three months. One to three weeks or months. I hope I hope she's found in one to three weeks. I hope she's found. So that's alright, so February, March, April. So that's four months. She's missing, so 30, 60, 90, 130 days. Wrapped in tarp. <sighs> Abused domestic violence. Near a garden. Eight to ten years. Maya, I hope it's not eight to ten years. No. Eight to ten years were okay. Had a good eight to ten years. Well, you had a long marriage. I had 24 years, but knowing the person 28 years, you had, uh, I think you were going to be married for 21 or 22 years. So you were, so only eight to ten years were okay. She's, she's putting her head down and she says the children saw a lot and I don't want them. He's dangerous. He's a dangerous man. This is what she's saying to me. So allegedly, you know, entertainment reasons only. Everybody's innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. She's worried about her kids. She keeps on saying age four, age, age nine, age 11. Please, please.